Bottle feeding piglets is nerve-wracking, it is wearying, and it is incredibly difficult. We've bottle fed calves and piglets, and piglets are by far the most difficult things to bottle feed. I'm Rob from Daddle Family Farms, and we had a sow that had 16 babies. She only had 12 teats, and so we put two of the babies with another sow, and we brought two home to bottle feed. Before you get started, it is imperative that if at all possible, you make sure that the pigs are allowed to nurse from the mama for the first several hours. Colostrum is incredibly difficult to find and chances are you won't be able to find it at the last minute. You might be able to order some ahead of time and keep it on hand, but unless you're farrowing a world of a lot of pigs, chances are you won't ever need it. So the best thing that you can do is actually allow the piglets to nurse the mama for the first few hours. Uh, they haven't found a specific teat yet, and so they'll move around and just make sure that all the piglets are allowed to nurse the mama some. I found that right after farrowing, or even during farrowing, the sows are pretty flexible and allow us to move the pigs around some. Once you get the piglets home, that's where the problem really, really begins. The thing that's the most important with bottle feeding piglets is keep them warm. Uh, they have very little resources, they have very little energy the first few hours, and they really need to be kept warm. We use a heat lamp and a box, but it's important that they can also get away from the heat if they need to. Piglets can normally survive the first 24 hours with the smallest amount of milk or colostrum, but they must receive at least a little bit or they go into hypoglycemic shock. Toward the end of this video, I'll talk about hypoglycemic shock a little bit more. Now, you'll need to have a bottle ready. Normally, the times when we've had to bottle feed pigs and that we have lost them, it's when, they, when we have not had a bottle. I've found that an 8-ounce bottle for bottle feeding puppies is one of the best things that you can use. I suspect that if all you had was an infant bottle, you could probably use that with a couple adaptations, but I have not tried that myself yet. In addition to being cold, the other main problem that we have with pigs is aspirating. That's when they get the milk into their lungs, and that's one of the most difficult and often tragic things to deal with. You'll find that most bottles have very, very, very small holes. I tend to make the holes a little bit larger, but not much larger. The main reason is the pigs need to be able to taste the milk so that they can swallow it. And the biggest problem that you run into is when you pick up the pigs, they're not swaddled like babies. They don't like being held at all. And so when you're picking them up, holding them and trying to feed them, they're trying to get away. And the reason I make the hole larger in the nipple on the bottle is so that they can taste the milk replacer and, and try to swallow it and at least get a swallow or two. But you'll find them squirming every single time. In fact, the pigs continue to squirm even when they're used to being bottle fed. That's just part of it. You can try using a medicine dropper or even a syringe, but every time I've used syringes, to give the pigs milk they have aspirated and died medicine droppers if you don't do much will help them a little bit so i mix the milk replacer up and i put it in the bottle and then i pick the pig up and try to open its mouth a little bit and put the nipple in every single time the pig squirms it'll try to bite your fingertips it'll try to bite the bottle sometimes the pig will calm down for a few moments and if the pig does I try to squeeze the tip of the bottle nipple just a little bit so that the milk comes out and the pig tastes it. Keep a sharp eye out on their throat and you can tell when they swallow just a little bit of the milk replacer. In the first 24 hours, if they swallow a little bit, then it's, it's great. Um, usually I find that I'm lucky if they get 10 or 12 swallows the first uh, 5 or 6 hours then it's just a matter of repeating the process every hour or two. Even during the night, the pigs need to be offered milk replacer, even if it's just a swallow or two, to keep them from falling into hypoglycemic shock. 
And this is what makes it one of the most aggravating things. Little pigs look really cute and their playing looks really, really cute as you can tell in this video. But when they're doing that in the middle of the night, all night long, it is incredibly, incredibly exhausting. And especially if they're only getting a couple swallows of milk replacer each time, uh, you really need to wake up every hour or two and feed the pigs. It's actually best not to bottle feed pigs and to pan feed them. And what that means is you're just setting a pan of milk replacer and letting them suck it up or eat it up out of the pan. Uh, I've found that it normally takes a week or so for me to get the piglets to that point. Although this gray piglet that we have here uh, was eating a little bit out of the pan and actually ate more out of the pan than he did out of the bottle for the first 24 to 36 hours. By far the best thing though is to pan feed and toward the end of the video I'll have a description on pan feeding as well. After some time you'll notice that the pigs will begin to nurse the bottle a little bit more. In this set of pigs the, the brown pig did that first and actually started taking the bottle uh, within 24 hours. It took another 20 hours, so about 44 hours, before this gray pig started doing that. Once they get to this point, though, the, because you've cut the hole in the nipple of the bottle larger, it's best to have smaller nipples. Once they learn to that little sucking action that you're seeing on the screen, it's better for them to have a nipple with a smaller hole so that they don't aspirate. Also, you'll notice that one of the biggest problems that you have, especially when you have two pigs, is that they will sit there and try to nurse each other. Uh, both the brown pig and the gray pig here have sucked on each other's ears endlessly. They're not trying to eat the ear, they're not trying to hurt each other, but they have this, this nursing or this sucking reflex and they've just found something warm. And so they'll try to nurse or suck that warm thing because that's what comes natural to them rather than the cold bottle. We've gotten to the point where we have to separate these two pigs when we're feeding them and they make a world of a lot of more noise when you do that. But they'd rather suck each other's ear in hope of getting milk than trying to suck the bottle even after they learn how to nurse from the bottle. If you're having trouble getting them to nurse from the bottle, you can stroke the side of their mouth while they have their mouth on the bottle nipple. You can also try stroking their uh, throat a little bit to encourage a swallow reflex as well. Uh, if you know of someone who is a speech therapist, uh, Megan, my wife, is a physical therapist and works with speech therapists. So she's applied a lot of the information that she's gotten from speech therapy and her co-workers to help encourage the pigs to nurse some. Just know that even though this is incredibly difficult, even though it's incredibly taxing, after a while the pigs eventually get it figured out. Also remember that this is the most unnatural thing for the pigs to do in several ways. First and foremost, pigs are not used to uh, being held and there's no way that you can teach them to feed without holding them. So they're gonna scream, squawk, and everything else. I'm sure you've thought that I was being uh, violent or whatever with the pigs while I was holding them and they're squirming. There may be a better way of holding the pigs and encouraging them to take a bottle, but if there is, I have not discovered it yet. Second, when you watch pigs nursing, normally rooting on the mama's mammary glands until they find uh, a place to nurse and so their natural instinct is to rub their nose or their snout against something until they find a per warm protrusion that they can start uh, sucking on. They're not used to having a bottle nipple just placed directly in their mouths. Even once the pigs learn to feed from a bottle they still squirm and cry and make a lot of noise when you pick them up and when you hold them. They're not like humans. They don't like being held. That's not what a mama pig does when she has 14, 15, 16, or even 8 babies. If you're expecting pigs to farrow and you're not sure what to expect, uh, these bottles are only about 6 or $8 for 2 or 3 of them, so it's worth having 2 or 3 of them on hand in case you do ever need them. I happen to have the milk replacer on hand because I've done this with other pigs in the past. However, 
you don't have to have the milk replacer on hand you can substitute with a couple other things just remember that pig milk has twice the nutrients in it as does whole cow's milk not the cow's milk that you buy from the grocery store but milk directly from the cows that would get you by if you're in a fix and you can't get to a pig re milk replacer immediately but you need to get a pig milk replacer within the first six or eight hours that's just to get you by overnight as a general rule it is not very easy to milk a pig <laughs> ask me how i know that i'm telling you it is possible but the only time i've been successful is when i was trying to just see if the sow's milk had come in to determine when she was going to have babies you can also add an egg or add just a little bit of sugar as well to that uh, whole cow's milk just to in give them the better nutrition that they need. My local co-op carries a Unimilk milk replacer, uh, so I can always go back and get it the next day if I have to. If you don't have a good local source of the Unimilk replacer for the pigs i'll get you a, a link in the description it's an affiliate link that you can use um, and this is the very thing that we use for our piglets so in the first few days the pigs are going to be trying to nurse they're overcoming that that instinctual nursing rooting behavior on the sow's uh, uh, belly so after a few days you can put a, start putting a pan of milk replacer in the pen with the pigs as they're starting to try to learn to pan feed. I know that they're going to make a mess. It is a pain in the neck, but it's worth trying to get them to pan feed as quickly as possible. Even when ours are nursing the bottle, I try to get them to pan feed every single day just for a couple minutes uh, just to get them to learn to eat off of a pan. It is so much easier, it's so much safer for the piglets, and it is by far the way to go. But I've never had any luck getting a pig to pan feed before they were about a week, week and a half old. Now I've already mentioned that the biggest thing is keeping the piglets warm, but the second biggest issue that you run into is hypoglycemic shock. Now the pigs will get cold if they're in hypoglycemic shock, but the hypo hypoglycemic shock is caused because the pigs are not getting enough sugar in their bodies to help keep them warm in part, but also to help keep their bodies running. You'll notice that even though they're alive, they're very listless. They're breathing just a little bit. It is not to be confused with a sleeping pig. Now pigs, when they sleep, can be incredibly difficult to wake up, but, but when they're in hypoglycemic shock, I don't have a picture or a video of that to show you, but just know that when they're in hypoglycemic shock, they're very listless, they don't move, and you cannot wake them up. If you think it, they're in hypoglycemic shock, the best thing to do is to try to wake them up immediately. If they wake up, they're not in hypoglycemic shock. If you've got a piglet in hypoglycemic shock, the first thing that you need to do pretty quickly is to get some sugars into them. You can do that by dropping some milk replacer you can also make, add just a little 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 bit of sugar to it maybe a teaspoon per uh, quart or so and give it to the pigs that will just help uh, bring them out of the hypoglycemic shock and get them to uh, moving around to be honest with you though if the pig comes to a point where they're in hypoglycemic shock uh, chances are uh, you will not be able to revive it, in my experience. I hope you found this video either helpful or entertaining. If you did, share it with somebody you think might find it interesting as well. Uh, give it a thumbs up, uh, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and uh, take a look at some of the other videos that we have. Take care, have a great day.